Hey book lovers, welcome to the Bookish Babes podcast featuring Jess and Sam, where we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about all things books. Hi guys, welcome back to the Bookish Babes podcast. We are super excited about this episode. We have another influencer on. We have Salma from Salma's Library on, and we're super excited to talk to her. Yeah, the queen of dancing TikToks while giving us quotes and recs, as well as loving some spicy heroes. So we're very excited to talk to her and kind of give you guys some new recs, maybe a new book boyfriend as well. So yeah, let's bring her on. Oh yeah, let's go. (laughs) Okay, so first question, when did you first start reading and what was the first book that got you into it? So I started reading when I was eight. Um... And the first book that got me into reading was actually a thriller, not a romance. It's a French book called Rouge Poison, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it's called. Anyways, something about kids and trying to find out a murderer. It was really good. And it got me into reading. And then here I am. I don't know how many (laughs) years later. I can't do the math right now. But yeah, I'm 24. So do the math yourself. Yeah, you're asking the wrong people. We don't know math either here. (laughs) <laughs> okay um so how well obviously this is an obvious like an obvious question how has what you've changed like what you've read changed from then to now well obviously I don't read thrillers anymore there's more <laughs> spice in the books that I read also yeah. um but yeah I just feel like as I grew I wanted my characters to grow with me um and there's certain needs that I needed in my books that weren't in the other books that I used to read so I found like solace in romance in a way like I could relate to it um and I I mean, obviously I didn't wait until I was grown up to read Spice I was like 12 but same here it's okay you know we we experienced I picked up the book I did not know it was it was gonna be that and it was a dark romance on top of it it was not just Spice I was Ooh, like you got what? dark starting young <laughs> it was like a kidnapping and I was like wait Am I attracted to this? Do I like it? <laughs> I'm like, maybe at 12, I shouldn't. So I hit the book for my parents and I'm like, okay, I'm going to return it to the library, but let's finish it first. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I just, I, well, I mean, I grew up with romance a lot. Um, and I don't know, I just feel like I can relate to the book. It kind of helped me with my standards, knowing what I'm worth and what I should be looking in a man and not settling for anything else than I deserve. So yeah, yeah. I, love it. I love that too. I started with Wattpad when I was like 11, 12. Let's just say my older man session started from there and that's not healthy. That's just yeah. not healthy. <laughs> hey, we all loved Wattpad. I don't think I've ever transitioned to Wattpad. It was like AO3, I think it was called. Or was <laughs> it the same thing? I don't even remember. I think there's some other. Website. I yeah. never did either. I, I, I never started, like, I never did any of that. I started with like, um Colleen Hoover when I was in like I was probably like 13 or 14 so and like my mom's a big reader too so like she knew what I was reading like she didn't care she gave me the books so it, it worked out for me but like we also- it didn't work out for me you know? <laughs> my, mom my book and she's like you read all that I'm like mm-hmm. she's like what is it about I'm like oh you know just people <laughs> just yeah, people yeah. in their lives yeah, yeah exactly yeah literally the other day because I read well me and like just don't have triggers so I there's a new book that came out by one of our favorite authors Emma Jones and so I was opening up the package you know and my mom heard me opening up the package in front of the camera and I literally like took it out she's like what what book did you get I was like Antichrist oh my god I read that <laughs> so good <laughs> so good and so like me it, like I was my mom's like super like christian like to the point of conspiracy like she's like incredibly like religious and i was over here like yeah it's like Christ. and she was just like oh okay what's it about and i was like you know a priest. journey to religion <laughs> religion you know what i mean <laughs> and then afterwards i left because i had to go to like a lecture and i was scared that my mom was going to go into my freaking like room look, look at that book and see that one of the trigger warnings was necrophilia because that, that's that's it was like i i i get really scared i do i get very uh, near the bookshelf yeah my mom my mom doesn't like she'll she'll come to my room 
and then she'll like clean up a little bit even though I tell her not to do it um, but she doesn't really look sometimes like the thing is like I'm in an immigrant household it's like having naked men in my covers is not you know it's a little bit frowned upon but my mom was like oh but they probably did not know what to put on it so they put naked men I'm like yes that's that's it exactly that's great good. so she doesn't really look at my cover she'll like just clean up around it um, and I'm lucky that like most of my books are like spine so even if there's like there's people on it she can't really see yeah but one day I received a package and it was like wolf porn and and they're like cowboys with like they're half naked and she's like oh what is this I'm like mom I don't know they sent it to me I didn't ask for it <laughs> I she's, wasn't like, oh, okay. she's like it's okay my daughter I understand she's, she's like you can put them away I'm like yes that's what I'm gonna do. just put them away yes that's what I did <laughs> oh my god I love it <laughs> um okay so kind of answered this but do you strictly read romance now or do you read any other genres as well I would say I strictly read romance but like I'll dabble in like fantasy but it has to have romance and then occasionally I'll read a thriller but you really have to hook me in for me to finish a thriller nowadays so yeah romance is, is where it's at it's the best I know I mean, right we're biased but like we're right <laughs> It's good. Like you'll give me romance, but you give me so many other other tropes. And especially like I'm much more of like a dark romance reader than a contemporary uh, romance reader. And I feel like dark romance, she'll give you everything. She'll give you a thriller, she'll give you murder, she'll give you a bunch of stuff. And you give me spice and romance. Like what what else do you want? There's nothing else you would want. So no, romance you, is you the best. Stop it. No, no, there's nothing. We're on the same nothing. Page. Okay. <laughs> so oh. yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> um so what is your favorite trope to read like if you could like get in the gauge of like a top three that is a great question so many people ask me that and I'm always like I don't know um <laughs> I don't know it because I feel like age gap is like such a big category that it, is it really a trope but I'm a big age gap person the bigger the better um but yeah but like inside of age gap I guess student teacher is one of my favorite um so yeah so maybe it's just the student teacher with the age gap that I like but I like any age gap um I also love single dad especially recently there's something about a single dad that just does it for me <laughs> I mean like not necessarily that I would want to date a single dad but like if I when I get married and I have a kid, I'm going to consider my husband a single dad, just to say, like, I experienced it in a way, like, you ain't going to be single, I'm still going to be there, but you can pretend for a second, just yeah. so that I can see the picture, you know, <laughs> um, and then, I don't know if taboo is considered a trope, but I, I love me, yeah. yeah, okay, well, oh, taboo, I, I love it, give me step-siblings, ex-boyfriend's dad, guardian like so my trope is like very big but like there's so many things in it so like age gap taboo and single that if all three can be in a book I will be a happy person <laughs> <laughs> very I, actually, happy. I made Sam a shirt that says uh the bigger the age gap the better the book that's like her thing like she's totally yeah I, I like literally like I consider myself an age gap enthusiast it's literally yeah. my favorite trope in this whole like world. Like if you ask me my top three series of all time, two of them would have an age gap trope. Like, you know, I love, I love QB Tyler. She's like, oh my there. God, that, I love her so much. Like the fact that I can call her friend. I'm like, really? You're my friend? She's like, yeah. <laughs> really? I love you. Um, <laughs> I love her. I love her. She's an amazing person, a fucking great writer. And the spice she puts in the oh. book. I'm like, you wrote that? It's some of the best. Like, I don't know what she puts in it. Like, literally, her, like, newest always been you. Like, oh. So good. Oh. She gave you gap step siblings. Taboo. She gave you everything. I was like. Literally everything. Thank you. So good. Thank you for your service. That was amazing. <laughs> thank you for your service. Much. Yeah. Thank you for giving me higher standards. And I really appreciate it. You know. I love her. I love her. Same. I am. 
the age gap. I need, honestly, I don't think I will find an older man, but they just do it differently. Oh, <laughs> no. you know? Literally all of my celebrity crushes. Oh my God, it does. Well, like- 50s, 50s, 60s, and okay. they're good as hell. Dude, Jess, like she's like, you're wrong, but I'm right, okay? Pedro Pascal, Pedro Pascal, Michele Morone, like, you know. He's, no, he's hot. Pedro Pascal, though. Pedro Pascal. <gasps> yes, okay. Yes. I just put his name because I was like, I, that, this tells me something. And I just Googled it. Yes, girl. They, the, the daddy video, I was dying. I, I was like, thank you. Exactly. I don't know how to, make, how to do it, but if I could, you would be. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're like, you went straight to my book heart. <laughs> he was like, Daddy oh, was like, oh, like, oh, like, that. like oh, that's prime age. <laughs> it's prime. It's I know. Prime. It's like 40 up. Exactly. Like 40 down. We'll consider yes, you. Yeah, I was about to say, I think you guys are soulmates. <laughs> Dude, like, uh, so me cool. and you, me and you go talk after this. You need to give me all the age gap, you know, books. I will read them. I love oh. it. Oh, who's your favorite? Yeah. I know this is like you guys asking me a question, but I'm curious. What's your favorite age gap? The Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. Oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I do it's love my girl. ever. Uh, I know some people are shot on, uh, like, oh, sorry. I don't know what you can say in a podcast. But it's more explicit. Oh, my God. Things about that series. Oh, my God. I'm like, but, but did you meet Kova? Exactly. If you yeah. meet Kova, you cannot make a statement about that series. Well, exactly. because it's not Batman. In, in a predatory way at all. Like, exactly. that's actually how we met, pretty much. Like, she yeah. had me read that series when we first started talking. And I was like, I had never read, like, anything, like, underage or anything like that. Which, technically, if we're going by technicality, 16 is age of consent in that state. Exactly. So, it's legal. But, I mean, I never read anything like that. And I was like, okay, let me try it. And after I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. It's amazing. Like, COVID is everything. <laughs> I know. He, like I mean I never called well I mean yes you call f- fictional characters hot but that man whoo god I was reading those books and like it was it wasn't my first Lucia I, re- I, re- I read um Hush Hush before oh, and it, James come on exactly. I don't know how 50 he is but I'll take it I'll, I'll be his controversial 20 year old girlfriend you know it's fine yeah, I'm like oh <laughs> give it to me I'm like can I be the 20 year old girlfriend I'll do it <laughs> for my Muslims listening I wouldn't but anyways uh, <laughs> but yeah the off balance I was reading and I was like oh my god this man I mean he was a little toxic I'm not gonna lie I haven't finished it yet because like I need to ease into the toxicity no listen oh cool. and having to go to clinicals I had to like put the stress away for a second. I was already stressed. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so I'm gonna take a breather. But honestly, and Lucia knows how to write her spice. I mean, the thing he does, the things he says, I'm like, this is like a manual for like husbands and like boyfriends or partners in general. Just like read this book, thank you. And then come back and do whatever you wanna do. But just read it first. So you have the blueprint. Oh my God. I love you said off balance. Oh, I don't know any people, like in much many people that read that series. Oh, we love, love it here. She was the first author we had on here. She's yeah, she was the first author we interviewed and everything. Sweetheart. She's so, so funny too. So funny too. But I also like there's also something about okay, I hate this. I literally hate, I know I'm gonna get hated on about this, but if they're like 16 to 17, there's just something that's different about it. Like welcome to the dark side, Zeus. Bro, bro, bro. <laughs> Ah, there's just something about when they're like 17 or 16 like I don't know what it is but it's there and when they're 30 like the, the guy has to be like 30 31 32 and it just it just hits differently and I'm like how can you not like this I mean don't you feel it when you read the book and also it's fiction just yeah just pretend for exactly like, this isn't real life like this isn't happening in real life it's totally fake it's fiction let us live in our fictional world. We're good. Exactly. 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 I'm like, but, if you need to make her 20, then then do it. But mm-hmm. it's hot. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but you need to finish off balance because I, I mean, I get it. It's like, I literally, I don't think I read for like a week and a half after that. Like I was emotionally drained, yeah. but like 
Also, have you read her newest one? What is it, Sam? Hold Your on. Mind Tonight? Yeah. The Spice in that one? Ugh. Oh, okay. my God. Like, honestly, sorry, my phone is, like, ringing, and I don't want it to. It's actually, it's QB. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to silence it because it's going to bother me. But I have read it, and I was, like, first of all, I was not expecting that, di- like, that dynamic to happen. Mm-hmm. And then it happened. And I was, like, but I like this. I like yeah. it. And then she said she was coming up with the whole book. I was like, thank you. Thank you very much. I like you. I'll take it. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Oh Literally. my God. I'm so excited. I'm excited to finish the Avance because like I started it and a friend of mine saw me start it. He was like, oh, like let's buddy read it. But he's like only on book two. I'm already on book four. So I'm like, I'm trying to like start it, but then I don't want to leave him behind. You've got to catch up. I know. Yeah. And I'm like, please, Marcus, like, let's go. Read faster. <laughs> So I it. need you to hurry up. <laughs> exactly. And especially book three ends bad. I'm like, yeah. I need to know what happens next. <laughs> oh, book four, there's a scene in there that you're going to literally want to die. Is that my favorite scene that we're talking about? It involves a letter. It involves a letter? Is that, is that what scene that is? You know what I'm talking about, Sam. Does it involve? Does it involve a K? No, like no. Does it involve an A? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh my God, that's what we mean. You, you're gonna die. You're gonna literally die. I, oh, like, I, I I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that series ten because especially I I know like when she was writing the last books, like a lot of stuff was happening with her series yeah. and stuff. And, and I heard like the alternative ending. And I was like, I swear to God, if you did that, I don't know where she lives, like Florida or something. I was like, I was going to book a flight, go see you and make you rewrite that ending. And then I'll be happy. <laughs> it's a I'll good ending. No, but yeah, I know, and it ends, it ends like on a good, no- good note. And also we're getting so, out of bounds like soon. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited for that. So I didn't even finish the series. I'm like, I already, oh my God, I need more. <laughs> oh my God. Period. Oh, so good. <sighs> we'll talk about it more after. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what is one trope that you don't like to read and why? I will say, I know it's like, it's very cliche, but like surprise pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I can't do it, but I will say, if it's the premise of the book, and I know that's like the whole book is about her finding out she's pregnant, I don't mind it as much. But if it's like the third act conflict and you're copping out and giving me a surprise pregnancy, nah. Because yeah. the reason I don't like it is like, I usually feel like, you know, obviously they're broken up. She finds out she's pregnant. And then I feel like they're getting back together solely because she has a baby. And I'm like, but do you really love her? Or are you there because there is a baby? Because if there wasn't a baby, would you come back? So like that always is in my mind. And I don't like it because most of the time I do like the guy. I do like the girl. I like them together. And then there's it, it will stay in my head. And I'm like, is he back because of the baby or is he back for her? So that's yeah. usually why I don't like it. I think it's the only trope I don't like. Otherwise... I pretty much like everything. I'm not really difficult. I mean, I'm a very critical reader, mm-hmm. but if you give me what I need, I'll be happy. I agree. I think I, I've read books where that happens and I like them, but it has to be like, the author has to really, really show that like these people really want to be together, baby or not. Like it can't just be like, oh yeah, they, they probably like, he he's back with her he still loves her and like just assumption like like it has to really like I need groveling like I need oh yeah everything yes there's not enough groveling in the, in the books that we read like mm-hmm. I rarely saw like good groveling and especially from a girl when she is the one who mess up and I'm like he's the one crawling back we love it mm-hmm. you should be crawling back too because you yeah. don't want him messed up like come on do something say something show that you want him as well and yeah maybe that's an unpopular opinion but I mean sometimes the girl needs to grovel no I agree I mean it's a two-way relationship exactly yeah for sure like for me like Jess knows the surprise pregnant I just don't do children okay I I could do a single dad 
I, I just like, I'm not like, I, like I'm writing right now. And like, there's a line in the book where just literally like was wheezing. Just, like, she, it was just like, uh, she was like, I don't want to contract an STD, but even worse, a child. So like, I, I don't really do children. Um, <laughs> I think they ruin books. Like in real life, it's fine. You know, if I have a child, whatever, I might like it. And I, I might like it. Oh my God, I might like it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope for you kid too. So, just like, I don't, I don't, I, I have no, like, because there's. <laughs> you're young though. Like you're not thinking about that now. Yeah, I know. So that's probably why it is. And I can understand that that trope helps a lot of people who have like problems. Conceiving. Like fertility like, issues and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And so that's why I think the trope is important. I just don't like it. I, I no, and I don't like miscommunication like either. Like say words, okay? You can fucking say them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you, got, you got a mouth and you can speak for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If they, if most of the time I'm like, because most of the, honestly, I, it's really, 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 really rare. I see a third act conflict done well, especially if it involves miscommunication. Because I'm like, literally, if you just took two seconds and listened to what the person said and sat your ass down and was like, you know what, let's talk about it. Everything will be resolved. No, you give me third act conflict, 90% in a book. The, like you're happy and in love for 90%. Why, why in the last 10% you're not gonna be happy and in love? <laughs> that doesn't click with me. You know, the sad thing is that most of the time the miscommunication issues are like, if it's with the male, like it, it's realistic. I mean, if we're being honest, like males don't know how to communicate in real life. So <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, the thing that annoys me the most is when the girl just runs away. Like, bitch, I don't like that. Just talk to him. And like, I need to protect you. Get the fuck out of here. You did not leave to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, if it's a really big problem and it affected that person, like person's life, mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's fine if they walk away for a little bit and they don't talk about it because um, they need time. But if it's like for four chapters, like, and it's the stupidest shit ever, like it's nothing to do with their relationship. It's literally like the girl, like thinks that he's cheating on her and he's not, and you don't confront him. Excuse yeah, no, me. I don't like that. I'll stop talking to you. No, if I knew I thought someone cheated on me, I would sit him down and be like, are you cheating? Which most of the time, as, as women, we usually know when someone is cheating for real. I mean, but you, really- you sit him down. You like, you talk. And like, if there's no valid reason for you to think something, why are you going to create problems? I don't, I don't get that. Yeah, I agree. Oh, God, I don't like it. <laughs> I was gonna say something and I forgot like you like you said you were you brought up like a really good point in terms of like fighting like people talk a lot about love languages but there's such a thing as like fighting language like a lot of people will need to like hash it out right now some mm-hmm. people need to take a breather go outside do something else and then they'll be able to have a conversation with you you can't force yeah. someone to either hash it out right away or to take some time so you have to like kind of find a comp like a compromise and I feel like in books or even in real life, honestly, not many people know how to fight properly, which like it takes no. time, obviously. But yeah, like I'm like, well, just just learn each other. You love each other, then learn how yeah. you each other fight and what you need so that we avoid the miscommunication. <laughs> yeah, That's a really exactly. good point. Yeah, exactly. Period. Look, we're, we're on like relationship advice with Sama. Exactly. <laughs> Expert. Never been in a relationship, but I can give you all the advice you need. <laughs> <From reading books. laughs> You guys are literally the same person. <laughs> oh my God, I love you. Okay, we're going to so talk after this. <laughs> okay. Also, you mentioned babies. You said, would or how do you feel about babies and epilogues? Like, do you need them, not need oh, them? I'm, I don't need them. I actually love an epilogue where there's no children because it literally just shows them like, you know, but I second do like a baby epilogue. What? But you like it when it goes to second generation. I love it. Okay, this is okay. This is how it works. The second generation, they're teenagers. They're not children that are crying and ruining the sexual lives of their parents. Okay. <laughs> okay, they're teenagers. They have their own little like sexual history. Okay, that, that's the difference. But I I love like children 
if it's not in their book. So let's say it's like a series of standalones, but like the characters are mentioned. Um, have you read Monster Muses by Savar Miller? So it's like Promises and Pomegranates. Um, and yeah. Vipers and Virtuosos so and Ultimate Mission. Yeah. And was an apologist coming out so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, um, ooh, Alistair, those little <laughs> shops. I'm like, what are you going to do with them? <laughs> you better give me a scene with them. If she doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed. Literally. Oh, okay, exactly. okay. Okay, continue. Yes, but, go ahead. Like, how? <laughs> and like, Elena, it's Elena. Yeah, Elena, they basically like, in the second book, they there's a baby mention, like they have a child. Or was it in Ocean of Visions? No, uh, I think it's also the mission. It's, I think it's like trickled in. Yeah. He has the, mentioned but we see in, it, we see the baby in book three. And mm -hmm. book two is just like mission. Yeah, in the epilogue, they have a baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but you see, like the couple had their book. You know, promises and pomegranates, but them they're mentioned in like Olsen omissions with their child. I love that. Okay, because I don't have to like. There's no sex scenes between them. The child's not gonna cry and interrupt it. Like I don't need that. So <laughs> that's why I like it in like other books. Like I love that, especially like a person like Cal who's so hard exterior, like softening up to a child. Like throughout the series, not in their book. Okay, that's like my thing. I don't know. I, I don't mind the manephalogs. It's just, I would like, this is what um, oh, Kel said. Like, um, she said that I just want like an epilogue where, you know, the couple's like, like getting drunk on a beach. <laughs> like literally like same bro. Like I would love that too. You know, I don't mind it, but <sighs> children. Yeah, I like it's it's the marriage and the babies. Personally, the babies, I don't mind it, but I need to know like, they they got to where they wanted. So let's say if it was marriage and babies, they got there. If they wanted, I don't know, buy something, they bought it. Like I need to know that they were happy because most of the time they'll end at the last chapter, and it's like you know they're happy they're together. But are they really happy a few years later? I need to know that. But I do like the little mention with like oh, and he talks about his daughter, like his son, and I'm like oh, so that's so cute. I love it. <laughs> literally, literally terms and conditions. Um by Lauren Asher, like at the end, like there's a child, not like in the chapters, but in like the epilogue. And the way that he talks about his kids, I, I melted. Like I like that. But it's the epilogue. It's not like it's not in the story. Exactly. You yeah. know, I like that too. Most of the time I don't like when there's like a baby involved, unless it's a single dad throughout the story. And most of the time when it's a single dad, it's really rare that it's actually a baby. It's usually like the yeah. kid is like six, seven, eight. I'm like, that's that like works, you know, because you get that like limbo between they're still a kid, but then they like have their mind of their own. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's not yeah. like he needs to be like constantly like carrying around changing mm -hmm. baby. Like you have time away from a kid. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I <laughs> literally I just I don't know why I hate it so much. I it's feel so bad. Like I want children, but like some people don't like it. And they're like, yeah. you know, I don't want it in my epilogue. But it is true. Sometimes I would like something like hit me with something different. Like you said. They're drunk, something happens. Most of the time, like, I don't know why, but in my head, I'm like, epilogue. I just want more of them. I don't necessarily need them to, like, have moved on or something. But, like, you could give me also just an epilogue just of Spice. I so oh, yeah. want that in a book. And I've, I don't think I've ever read something I was just Spice in the epilogue. Like, that's, oh, well, besides a Jessica Kane novella, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, Jessica Kane, Alexa Riley. Yeah, she'll give you baby marriage and the whole time that all they're doing is they're banging each other. That's yeah, it. exactly. That's the only time I accept children. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have problems. Okay. Um, oh, it's okay. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> you know. Um, so what are your top three standalones and why? Mm, top three standalones. Oh, God. That's such a difficult question. Can it be in an interconnected series? Yeah. 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 Okay. So I will say based on what I'm looking at in my shelf, okay. birthday girl, yes. I, I don't care what anybody says, Jordan and Pike were meant to be together. Yeah. He was meant to bait the sun just to get to Pike. I don't care what anybody says. Literally, period. Exactly. Like, love, that. like, that's, like, I know it sounds weird, but like, it's such a love story. And I'm like, oh, babies, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mm. 
there's a tie between unconditional and love unexpected, but I think I will say unconditional by QB Tyler. I think I like, like, I liked it. I liked it slightly more, even though Love Unexpected was my first book from her. So like it has a special place in my heart, but mm-hmm. unconditional. There's just something about about them. Love them and the spice in that book. Like I literally have three copies of the book. If that doesn't tell you how much I love it, I don't know what will. Like two <laughs> normal, like two normal. Then I have the uh, special edition from Hello Lovely Books, and then I'm waiting for my hardcover. So, oh my god, clearly say we. I love it. And then mm, I will say Scarred by Emily McIntyre. I really liked it. Like it was one of my favorite reads of 2021. Well, technically it came out in 2022, but I read it in 2021. Mm -hmm. She gave me like what I love in fantasy, but in like a spicy way. I don't know how to explain it. It was just so good. So good. Ah, oh, the little nods to the Lion King, the slow burn, the fact that he was the brother. She's not supposed to. Oh, I loved it so much. The <laughs> church queen, when she was like, and then he was like, go ahead. Oh, my God. Like, really? oh, see, man, this is an example. This is what you should do. If I do this, you're like, okay, go ahead. Don't question yeah. me. Did not question, did not flinch. She was like, yeah, go ahead. And she's like, no, I, I don't know if that's when they said, I love you, but. I will consider it in my head that's I'm not sure was oh, it? I anyways I know something happened afterwards but I love 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 I mean I love Emily um but I think okay. Scar- yeah I think mm, those three those three yes yes those are my three tops those are good top three <laughs> <laughs> okay um what are your top three series and why series see I don't read that many series um mostly interconnected but that's also a series yeah I mean I say, oh that's 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 more difficult than the standalones it's funny okay. everyone normally says the opposite really yeah because I have so many like interconnected series like I'm big 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 on that I love it because like you're giving me of the world but like with different couples and I don't need to stand the couple yeah. for like 15,000 books um okay even though I haven't finished it because I'm looking at it and I'm like, I like you. The Off Balance series, there's just something about it okay. that like I've never read before that there's no way I can't put that in my top. So it, Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. We talked about it. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Spice, Kova, even though you want sometimes to do that, but you also want to hug him. I love him. <laughs> um, oh my God, this is so difficult. Oh, Mm. <laughs> oh, no. okay i haven't finished it yet i just have one book but the hoop series by kennedy ryan so good i know i jumped from like forbidden to like contemporary but i love that series so much you only like, read the first one no i read book one book two i still have book three to read <gasps> book three is the best one no it's my most anticipated of that series I really want to read it but like I have a problem when it comes to like series or like interconnected series most more with interconnected is like when I know it's the last book and I won't be able to jump back in the world I can't do it like most (laughs) most of my interconnected series I have not read the last book the dirty history still haven't read redeemed um the, <gasps> it's the best book I people say it's the best one haven't read it um the ravenhood trilogy still haven't read the finish line uh the follow man series still haven't read the the last book even though there's like more books coming so like it, it kind of helps my heart to be like it's okay there's more mm-hmm. even sophie like the brutal birthright i still haven't finished the, the sixth book have you I, didn't have have to. I didn't read kingmakers i need to finish that i don't need, i need to finish book six but i'm like but if i finish it even though it's their kids i i won't see them anymore no, no you will. will you will you'll still see them i promise well, you have to get the kingmakers kingmakers is so good you know, so many people say so many great things about it i will i will I, my goal is like by the end of this month hopefully i can read book six but yeah hope siri i love i loved it book one broke my heart like when i tell you i was i'm not a i'm not, I'm not a crier in real life or in books but when i tell you i was sh- sh- crying 
I did not say that I cried, by the way. Anybody listening? I did not cry. Salma did not cry because thugs <laughs> don't cry. But I bawled my ass out. Like, ugh. I was like, how can men do this shit? Honestly, terrible. All the time. Well, all, all the time I say fuck men. But especially during that time, I was like, men really ain't shit. Like, really? literally the worst type of human being. I have fat. And I'm reading another book right now. And the guy is doing the same thing. I'm like, why am I putting myself in this situation reading this? Yeah. And like, I'm driving, like- listening to the audiobook, and all you can see is my face is doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and people probably watching me in the other cars and be like, what the heck is wrong with this girl? And I'm like, I'm screaming on my, my audiobook. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> what is she doing? So yeah, Hoop Siri. Love it. I'm really, really excited for book three like really excited for book three Lotus is literally like I know I love her from the other books and even him oh he's amazing too and he's a single dad too I'm like come (laughs) on um and then lastly hmm, okay so there it's like a bit of a tie between Sav's Monster and Muse and then the Never After series but I will say the Never After series just because I don't think I have ever met an author that writes so beautifully. Like Emily's writing is so lyrical. And like, if you're like the type of person that really like, like song lyrics or like poetry, like she just, she just taps into my heart and I'm just like, thank you. Um, And then the fact that like villains get their happy ending i'm like sign me up i love it and she gives you something different than everyone and i'm really excited to see where that series goes so i would say i would say that even though there's like so many other series on my shelves that i'm like i like them but i would say those three great picks (laughs) very good picks um so who are your top three authors and then like your favorite book for each Y'all with the, your top threes. I don't know. This is the last one, promise. <laughs> last one. Um, we had to answer these ones too. So. <laughs> well, obviously QB. Yeah. Um, so QB, my favorite from her, I will say is unconditional. Mm-hmm. Again, I love her as a person. I love her as a writer. She'll yeah. like give you great stories. She gives me the right taboo. I, I don't think I've, I've ever met someone that like wrote, wrote taboo so well yet yeah. anyways. But now she's like my top. I love her. Um, Have you read Campus Tales yet? Yes, I read book one, book two. Semester. Yes, fact. The second <laughs> semester. Oh, it was one of my favorite reads of last year, and it's literally I like know. only hundred pages. Oh, I love it. But I haven't read the uh, the other one, like spring semester. Mm-hmm. I I read that one. I like friends to lovers, but ugh. I actually liked it a lot. But I'm most excited for the next one coming out because the unlawful, Mm-mm. the next uh, campus sales one that she's oh. Peyton's. I think her name yeah. is. Because oh, she's been, huh? But wh- who's gonna be her hero? I uh, she we talked to her. She told us it was um like her t- the TA like the nerdy TA and Peyton. <gasps> oh yeah, I'm like kind of excited for her take on that. This month. Yeah. I'm excited for that too. I mean, I mean, anything she writes, it's like she writes. Oh, yeah. Bye, 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 bye. But yeah, unconditional is my favorite. I just love it. Um, Sierra Simone. Ooh. Okay. Sierra Simone. I haven't talked about her books yet, but like, just also the way she writes. For me, I like I connect a lot to like obviously the story but also how someone writes and Sierra just knocks it out of the park every single time my favorite from her I haven't read the Camelot uh trilogy yet I'm starting book one very soon but my favorite is Sinner just because of Shondell that man is so fine in every single aspect of the way like he's the definition of fine like he's a great man he's older, he knows how to treat a woman, he takes care of Zenny. I didn't really love Zenny, not gonna lie. He did some things that I was not very appreciative of. That's like the best way I could say it without cursing her out. But <laughs> I, I, I love Sinner so much. Their love story, even though I don't like her that much, but I love them, love, love, love them. So like that for now, that's my favorite. Um, the Sierra, QB, and then... Um, 
is very difficult. Oh my God. <laughs> so many great writers, but like another top. Emily. I'll say Emily. I really like her books. Um, I just like the way she writes, the way she constructs her plots. Um, I read her never after. I have read half of like the Sugar Lake series. Love it. So you yeah, finish Sugar Lake. Sugar Lake is so good too. Know. I'm excited for book four, which is like um uh oh my god, what's the sister's name? I know the oh, yeah. sister's name. Yes, I'm really excited to see her story. I kind of like want to understand what happened and like where she went. Um, so yeah. I want to read the who the hood. Hey, my god, my French was gonna start coming out. <laughs> <laughs> read the hood. Um, so that's where I'm at. But yeah, I love everything she writes. Beneath the hood and beneath the surface, I think are the two best ones. They deal with like some more serious topics that she actually told us that uh, she went through in her own life too. Yeah, um, I love that. that Which I, I loved when she said that. I was like, oh my God, I love you. Yeah, yeah exactly. It. So it's definitely, the Beneath the Service especially is definitely like emotional, but like yeah. so good. I'm excited, but I'm scared to finish it because again, yeah. I'll finish and then no more. <laughs> she, she did say it's po- always possible she could go back to that stuff. Yeah, she said she wrote the side characters yeah. the way she did because yeah. something. It's I was never like, closed oh. off. So, I know. Oh. I'm excited. But I want to finish it because I really, really want to get, I really want to get to, to Lily's book. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm, Special I'm, book. <laughs> okay. So what is an unpopular opinion you have when it comes to books? So it could be something you love and others hate or just something people might not agree with you on. Um, if you have one, some people don't. I think besides the girl have to grovel, which I don't think, I thought it was an, unpo- an unpopular opinion. But then when I discussed it in my stories, a lot of people agreed. So I was like, I'm not alone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think just the fact that sometimes girls need to grovel. Um, and then like, it, it, is it just in general about books or like about a certain book or? Just in general, whatever you want. Well, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm not really difficult. Um, there's not many things I hear about books. They're books. I love them more than people. Yeah. So same here. That's why we read them. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a little different. I'm a little more opinionated. <laughs> just oh, the very like she loves like stars. Like she gives every book almost four stars. And then I'm over here. I'm, I'm like not picky. picky. I'm, I'm not picky. Star I'm very very picky in terms of like what I give a book. Like I like I said, I love everything, but then I'm really critical because I'll read the book and then I'll be like, okay, the book was great, but there's a few things either I feel like could have hand Bill handled better. Um, but if like in just in general, it's just me. I mean, my, even if it's just me, I'll give it a harsh rating if I didn't think it was <laughs> it was it was to my I guess my standards. But again, everything is subjective. So yeah, me, like, I, mean, something. I think part of my thing is that like most of the books that I do pick up, I pick them up because I know I'm gonna like them. Like I know I'm gonna love the book. I know that you know a lot of the books I read are authors that I've read before and I know I love their writing and stuff so Mm -hmm. when I do read them I'm like like for example like Sav I read all her books I already know the next one it'll probably be a five stars too because it's just the way she writes and the way her stories are crafted I'm like Mm -hmm. you're just so good so it's a I'm the same that's why like there's it's really rare that I really really dislike a book yeah. Because like you said, I usually pick up a book from someone that I already know I love their writing, mm-hmm. even though I don't know what the book is about. Because I'm the type of person, I do not read synopsis. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I just don't do it. Mm-hmm. I like to go. I want to be surprised. So like, again, at the end of the day, if I don't like something and it was like in the synopsis, like, again, that's on me. Um, but yeah, like, it's really rare that like, I'll really, really dislike a book. I think the last book I disliked was just because I feel like something was not handled properly in the end. And it's like not talked about at all on book talk. And I was like, did you guys miss this part? Or is it just me? And then I was like, I started talking to people. I'm like, no, okay, I'm not alone. Um, but yeah, I usually love pretty much everything I read. Same here. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I'm harsher me. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that. I, I'm very, like, I try to only talk about the books that I like, 
Mm-hmm. And then the books that I don't like, I just say, yeah, I didn't like this. But there, I do have a one star club. I also have an author where it's like hit or miss. I either love or absolutely hate a book, but happens. it happens, you know, and it's fine. You know, I, it's mm. unpopular opinion. What are you guys' Because I'm actually curious. Oh my God. Someone asked us this before and I thought of one and now I can't remember it. Sam, you oh. can go first while I think. The only two books I've ever liked by Penelope Douglas is Birthday Girl and Misconduct. I don't like, I think Credence is an experience everyone has to go through, but she ended up with the wrong guy. Um, yeah. I think you need to reread. No, I don't need to reread. Oh, you, you felt like she had to go with, with Jake? Yeah. yeah. I think it's the age gap in you. And <laughs> yeah, it is. I had read the book and she was like, she ended up with the wrong guy. I'm like, oh, she didn't end up with the older one. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the only I feel like Uncle Jake like his his like significant other was like kind of a cop out I feel like he deserved a little bit better but actually at me as soon as she said Caitlin I was like yes you're you're the one I want he wasn't even in the story she just said his name I was like I know you are gonna be special and then he ended up being <laughs> I just love Uncle Jake. He's like, I love him. If she could have given, I don't do reverse harem a lot, but if I could have had a reverse harem, let's take out Noah from the equation. I don't really love him. But if it could have been Uncle Jake, Caleb, and her, oh my God, I would have been so happy. <laughs> Literally. Um, I think there was another one. Well, I have like a one, like, I liked It Ends With Us, but it's not a romance book. No. Nah. But people mostly mistake Colleen Hoover for a romance writer, but she's actually a woman's fiction. Yes, the romance in the books is like the, a big, big, big part of it, but every single one of her character have a very big like past. Every sing- There's not one book that I can think of, maybe Slam, but like I, hadn't, I haven't read that book in a very long time. But like confess, she goes through things. Reminders of him, she goes through things. Like yeah. it ends with us, she goes through things. November 9th, she goes through things. So I'm like, yes, romance is a big part of it. But if you look at her books, they're all labeled women's fiction. So I'm like, don't, don't start selling books as like romance when they're not. Because then people go into it with the thinking, oh my God, it's going to be a heartwarming. It is in the end. She breaks your heart. She'll mend it. But she'll break it really, really like a lot. Like when I read her books, I'm like, did you have to do this? Like you didn't have to put me through that. So yeah, but it ends with this was really difficult. A lot of people went into it because like it was a pretty pink cover. And I'm like, y'all about to be like very surprised reading that. And you're not going to be so happy because you thought it was a beautiful romance with Atlas. I'm like, that's not the point of the story. Yeah, Forget but- that though. Thank God. It yeah, point. hopefully. But see the thing, I'm a little confused about that. She said it was a prequel, and then now we're getting, like, them now, like, as adults. So I'm like, is it when they were younger, or is it, like, a sequel? I think it's a sequel. I think so, too, but then she kept, like, being adamant about it being, like, a a prequel book. So I was like... With what she I I prefer it it has to be a sequel. It it has to be a sequel. That's exactly what I'm thinking. But, yeah. Sorry, my um, mom is like screaming. So I'm sorry for the background noise. But um, yeah, but I, I really hope it is a sequel because I feel like why would you give me them before when we're asking for for like them to be together, basically. By the way, spoiler alert, even though it's like later. But anyways. I mean, if you I, I feel like everyone's read it with us at this point. Yeah. But, um no, I agree. And I mean, I, I hope it is a sequel because I do really want to see like them together after. Me too. But, um, okay. I think the only one I can think of is that I don't like to read paperbacks really. Like I will, if you give me an option between reading an ebook and a paperback, I will always choose the ebook. But I have to have the paperback too, but I will never touch it. Like I will buy the paperback and it'll sit on my shelf to never be touched. And it's just decoration. Only if it's a pretty cover though. <laughs> that is true. I think now I'm more of like an e-reader. So I would do the same thing. But before I used to be such a paperback person. But then I ended up buying so many books that my tier is like my whole bookshelf. So I'm trying to be better 
and read my paperbacks. But yeah. my rule now is if I read the ebook and I liked it, then I buy the paperback. Yes. That I'm doesn't always that. work, but I try my best to follow that rule. I try also, but it doesn't always work either. But I, I, oh, I think I've always, the first couple books I read were paperback. But after that, like I've always, I used to read like on my phone in school. So like always been like e-reader person. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it depends. If it's like contemporary or something that's not really romance or like it's a graphic novel, like I just bought all four Heartstopper books and I bought like Red, White and Royal Blue because I want to experience those in paperback. And then I've like did all the Bridgerton too because there's some, like I can't read Colleen Hoover on e-reader. I have to read her in physical copy. There's like some authors where I'm like, I just can't do it on Kindle. I want to read them in paperback. I just... To be completely honest with you, my hands get tired from holding the book. Like, that's my excuse. <laughs> that's that is very true. Me too. Like, I'm like, I'm growing old. My fingers yeah. hold. <laughs> so <laughs> my sincerity hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when and how did you, like, get into book talk and, like, bookstagram? Um, so it hasn't been that long, but I got into it because I... I'm working on a clothing company and I'm always like, I've always wanted that if I had a business, I wanted like people to know who I was, like be comfortable in front of the camera and stuff. And like, you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell now. Cause like, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable, mm -hmm. but you would like, if it was a year ago, trust a picture of myself, me filming videos on my phone, making stories never would have happened. I would have laughed in your face. But I was like, I really need to be comfortable to be able to like interact with, with my customers. And I was like, you know what? There's one thing I really love is books. And then I discovered book talk. I was like, you know what? Like, let's try it. So I started posting and then, and I was like, you know what? Like, let me start posting my face. And the rest is history. Started a bookstagram just to get the same like handle I was like maybe one day I'll want to go to Instagram um and yeah the rest is history here I am almost a year later in a few months I love it that's crazy I love that it like you it was like you step in your your way of stepping outside of your comfort zone and now it's like blowing up like this for you exactly you never would have imagined it me having followers I didn't I didn't even think that was a thing I was like there's <laughs> no way people are gonna want to see what I have to say about books and then there's like a whole community. And I grew up reading on my own. I didn't have reader friends. Yeah, I would be the kid in the library looking at the shelf for like two hours trying to pick up books and like getting out of the library, like 15 books in my backpack. So like talking about books was not really a thing, but I'm really grateful that I'm able to do that now because if I didn't have people to talk about the books I just read, I'd be like, but who am I going to talk to? My walls? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know I understand. So yeah, I'm really happy. Like, it's really nice. Everybody's so loving. Obviously, there's always like bad things yeah. that happens, but like, that's in every sphere. Like, it doesn't matter what field you're in. Um, but it's great. Like, for the most part, everybody's loving. We could talk about like spice and kinks and like what we like, what we don't like. And we're like be becoming comfortable. Like, for mm -hmm. me, spice books, like, yeah, they're fun 100%. I, don't get me wrong. But it's also a way of like learning what you want, what you don't want, what you would like to try and not try, like how to communicate, be comfortable with your own body, be comfortable communicating those needs to like your partner. And like, that's not something that I would have been comfortable with, especially like as an immigrant, it's not really something we speak about. And like these books, like literally made me not scared of like when I get married and have to like experience that for the first time, I'm able to be like, you know what, let's sit down, let's talk about it. Before I'd have been like, don't touch me stay there which probably is still gonna happen because even though I'm not really I don't like people touching me but I'll be like okay let's communicate I'll get there um but before <laughs> books never never would have been able to do that so yeah I love that and that has helped you in like so many ways and like you know a lot of people hate on romance and be like oh you're reading porn or you're reading erotica whatever all that stuff but like sex is part of a healthy relationship so like <laughs> It's not like, like if you're ex excluding it, like you're missing a huge part of a relationship. A relationship is emotional and physical. Like you can't just have one or the other. So like without it, it's not romance. Exactly. Like people think that like what 
like being with somebody is just one aspect there's so many aspects with being with somebody yeah. and I'm just like is there's nothing to be shamed about like it's normal you should be able to talk about it in a mature way obviously you're yeah. like even if you don't want to talk about it maturity that's that's up to you you can do whatever you want but it's like that's all part of a relationship a relationship is not like one dimension it's like multi-dimensional and books literally show you that they show you every aspect yes there is spice if people want to call it porn erotica yes there is we enjoy it and it's great but it's also like a way of like showing you how to be comfortable like why yeah. did that be wrong? like stop hating on stuff that you don't even know because if you uh, hate about it that means your relationship must suck like oh, yeah. really suck and i'm not happy for you 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 want advice <laughs> we could give you some but <laughs> read a book you need it <laughs> yeah, exactly read a book you need it I also think that there's a lot of people who have gone through like sexual trauma and then they finally see that there's situations where it's like you can give consent like this is the way it should be and like the woman can get pleasure in these interactions you know what I mean it's not just about a man's pleasure or things like that and I just think that is so important like so important um just for like women's sexual health and also like being able to like know what to do and you know get turned on by specific things and knowing your kinks so yeah, yeah because a woman doesn't just woo -woo, like <laughs> it just happens like you need, yeah. you need things like it, it has build up and stuff like that and a lot of women are like in relationship and they're like faking it or like they're trying to please their partner but like he's your partner he should please you as well like you should i'm a very firm believer she should come first then we could talk about you because you could come pretty fast it's not it's not gonna take a lot like <laughs> in terms of like if we talk about in terms of like health i'm like gonna put my medical cap a cap on it's like it takes longer for a woman to to like get there like mm -hmm. just scientifically speaking so like you have to learn how to how to also please yourself like mm -hmm. i don't know i just feel like romance books are like and like you said especially when it comes to the trauma a lot of people will read dark romance because they they want to take back that power in a sense like they want to be able to be like you know what that that character went through it and she took back the control i want to do that as well so like it's so empowering and i don't understand what people especially when it comes to like consent in dark romance like oh my god i can't believe you read that there is a reason why that trope exists yep and it's for the people that yep. will understand it if it's not for you that's totally okay babes you just don't have to read it yeah you yeah. don't have to love it but you don't have to hate on it either mm -hmm. and i exactly. also think it's like really cool to like understand a situation where like the the partner understands the body like the like his partner's body like especially like her and it can take him like I think this is really skilled like I think that once a person gets to know their partner's body it's easier for them to know what they like then yeah. they can come faster you mm -hmm. know what I mean so like once you have those experiences you have those build-ups you have those like oh what's the word in English like those thought like the recognition of like um this is how you get them to like mm -hmm build up really fast and there are some men that know their partner's bodies and they can give a girl a, like they can make them come in five minutes like that's that's yeah, the way true. it should be and if you're not able to communicate like that and be okay with talking about stuff like that with your partner you probably shouldn't be with them because it, it doesn't work <laughs> exactly exactly communication is not just outside of the bedroom there is communication wow. inside of the bedroom. You have to learn each other in every aspect. You're spending your whatever amount of time, life with that person. You have to get comfortable talking about these things. And like, for me, the reason like I, especially when people start hating, oh my God, you're hijabi. How the heck do you read romance? Why would you read Spice? Oh my God, you're sinning. Let me tell you something. God never like shamed sex. There's a reason why there is like it exists in general. And those books make people feel comfortable once they get with their partner to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Because it's not something that we talk about in our household. You'll never catch me talking with my mom about this. My mom is pretty like, I mean, I wouldn't say advanced is not the best word, but like she would be open to talk about it. But I know it because of culture, it's not religion. 
because of culture, it's like a taboo thing. And yeah. not even just an immigrant household, in general, in this world, it's like a taboo subject. And I'm like, but like, it's natural. Like, you should talk about your partner with these things. You should experiment. Mm-hmm. You should be comfortable wanting to experiment because you won't know if you like something or how you can get to somewhere without talking about it or trying. And, you know, the comfort should always come first too. Like I, I've been with my boyfriend for six years now. And like, I was more comfortable with him than anyone else in my life before we even started dating. Like it should be something like it, everything should come naturally and nothing should have to be forced. Exactly. Very true. Comfort is such a big thing. Like if you're not comfortable and you like, you feel like you're doing this when whatever your partner does, that's not a good sign, babes. You need someone better. <laughs> That's not a good sign. No. Very not. That's especially this. That would be really bad. But <laughs> okay. Moving on. Um, any upcoming books you're super excited for? So this is we're filming this super early. This is airing, if for anyone listening, this is airing in August. Um, but just for the remainder of the year. Um well, definitely errors and apologies. I'm very excited for, about that. I need, I need Alistair. Hopefully Emily writes another Never After. So I'm excited for that. Obviously it starts with us. It better deliver. I will be really disappointed if it doesn't. Um, I don't really keep up with like next releases, but I think Kennedy Ryan is coming up with like a, I think Marriage in Trouble, Marriage Reconciliation book. And they're like grown people. Um, I think it's a black couple as well. We love diversity. She always gives it anyways. Um, so I'm really excited for that because I love Kennedy. I love her writing and I, and I want to see how she takes her twist on that. Um, obviously if QB ever releases unlawful, I'll be very happy. Um, and then is there another book I'm excited for? Oh, Anastasia. Oh, I, yes. I, I love that movie so much <laughs> so I'm really really excited to see to see that and I have a friend of mine she's writing the book so and she's supposed to release it I think this summer so I'm excited for that as well exciting <laughs> okay um if you could be any fictional character who would you be and why oh my god <laughs> And you guys are like, I don't know, uh, yeah, fictional character. Mm. People answer differently. Some people will go by like who, like what female they want to be. Some people will go by what book boyfriend they want. Some people will go by what world they want to live in. It depends. I think I think it was gonna go with the book boyfriend I want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I would too. <laughs> if we go with the book boyfriend I want, definitely want Sean Bell. So like, I'll give him his 10 babies. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you like, do you see how many babies that man has with her? I think they're I, like at seven now. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't read any of Sierra Simone yet. I get yelled at by every person that comes on here. You, you have to, honestly, if I know. you a priest, you could jump right into center. I'm telling you. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, you can, you could do it. Cause like, like Tyler is a, um, an acquired taste in a sense, not in your part, but just in general, like as a, yeah, he's special, um, is very spicy. So some people are a little bit uncomfortable about it, but honestly, I didn't, I didn't really mind it. it. Yeah. I actually didn't think it was spicy. That's just me. Maybe it's because like, I, <laughs> you also <laughs> didn't read it like right after Off Balance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Compared to Off Balance, it's not, it's not the same amount, like the same level of spice, but it is, it's, it's out there. Like had me sweating. I couldn't put the book down because I was like, what is he going to do next? Well, uh, I, it. <laughs> I, I didn't love it. I, I didn't yeah, love it's it. My favorite. I, I need to read Sinner and I also really want to read Saint because oh, like, yes, please, please read it. I'm, I, please make it your read for this month. Anytime Sinner, I'm telling you, like, I personally didn't really love Zenny, but like you'll understand when you read the book. But Saint, I love Sean Bell. Don't get me wrong. But Saint, Aiden, Elijah, they just hit differently. And honestly, the mental rep in that book is so well done. I've like, I've never read Depression so well 
this tribe. I was like reading the book and I was like, but that's how it, it is in my brain. I'm like, really? You understand that? And she wrote it so perfectly. It was beautiful. Um, so I definitely suggest you. I know Priest is not everybody's favorite. I will say not that I didn't like it. I enjoyed it. It's like, I will call it my third favorite of the series. And I'm really excited for Ryan. That is also, I don't know when she's releasing it, but I'm excited for his book. Um, but yeah, Sean, I would, I would want to be his wife very, <laughs> very badly. Yeah. Otherwise, like a strong female character that I really liked. Hmm. I liked Lenny from Oats in a Mission. Oh. She just gave me like that, I don't give a shit vibe. Yeah. But like she had that innocence in her as well, but like a little psycho. And that's kind of how I am. Like hmm. you couldn't tell, but I'm just a little bit. Um, yeah. And I like that. And she was like, yeah, I'm psycho, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> we owned it. I know. So I love that. So like, I would like to be her. And obviously Jonas is a great bonus. So, oh, so good. <laughs> um, no, I'm definitely going to read it serious amount eventually. It's on my TV, TBR. I'm not reading right now because I'm writing, but as soon as I'm going to me right reading, now. Yeah. Be, oh, it sucks, man. <laughs> can't read and write at the same time. Can't do it. Yeah, um, well, I've been doing it and it's been like, I'm almost done with my book after like six months. Like it's fucking good for you. I, I can't wait for you to get there. Cause I, my fingers hurt and I'm like, I really want to read. But then like, for me, it's like, I'm always scared of reading and then I'm writing. And then like, I, I mean, am mistakenly, yeah. Like yes. transcribe it. Uh huh. Um, so I'm like, oh, but I could read something that's like a different genre, but like yeah. I'm re- writing a romance book. Yeah. Can't, can't read anything else. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm literally the same way. I just started writing yesterday. So I was waiting till I graduated because I can't multitask for shit. But- that is me. I graduated two weeks ago and I was I was writing back in like January when I had like a bit of a break. Mm-hmm. And then the book that I'm writing right now like just came to me. So I was like, I'll pause this one and then I'll start this. I was like, you know what? I finished graduation. Let's write. And like every day I'm like. Literally me. We're the same. <laughs> but uh, there's me still in. <laughs> yeah. You, you got some ways to go. So horrible. <laughs> like I'm so done. <laughs> well, once I start reading again, that's definitely on my TBR. Um, okay. If you could only read one book or series for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? You're asking that to a reader? Sorry for the noise. <laughs> I, I my window is still open. It's okay. I'm like in, in a small town. Wh- why are you making this much noise? Like it's not necessary. Thank you. Okay. Um why would you ask me that <laughs> what one book ever or a series i want to pick a series because at least there's multiple books right yeah. um oh my god i'm gonna pick that one just because it's the longest and it kind of gives you everything uh brutal birthright slash everyone, yeah 10 that's books everyone you can whatever you want in any I heard the world building in the Kingmakers is amazing. Oh, yeah. A Hogwarts mafia, sign me up. Um, and I feel like you could you could read any of the books in any orders that you wanted. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe not the Kingmakers. You gotta think like there's like the whole plot thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think the Brutal Birthright, you could read it. If you want a little bit of Riona and Raylan, you could read it whenever. And then it's like, not that her books are forgettable, but like, because you're so hooked on the other book, you could go back to the another book and then you'll be like, oh, but like you're kind of experienced it for the first time. And yeah. also like she builds that world. It like it looks like a movie or a TV show or something. So yeah, that's what I would pick. Yeah, it, it, literally anyone that's ever read Sophie, that's their answer. They're like, we're combining Girl of and Kingmakers. <laughs> that is the answer. <laughs> we, get some books. We, need yeah. make, we need to make a compilation of all of like the people who say that. And then we literally we really do. We should. I do it. Oh my God, there's so many I people. Know, I think you would read. Oh, that's the difficult question. But I will pick Sophie because I can get whatever I want in any book. <laughs> yeah, like I honestly think there's maybe only two or three people that we've had on here that haven't said that. Like it, it's so many people yeah because I mean, I agree. books instead of just one and yeah. you get different couples yeah exactly you get a little bit of everything for sure okay um as an influencer is there a fellow book influencer that you absolutely love to watch or just love their content in general 
there's a few, but I don't know if I'm biased because they're friends, but I love Pauline. She gives you a bit of everything. Um, she'll give you reaction and wax. Kind of like it. She's a sweetheart too. She <laughs> puts a smile on your face. So I love Pauline um, and Amon. She's very funny. She's a fellow hijabi. Love her. Um, I think those are my two, my two top ones. There's a few others. Kels is hilarious. Love her. Um, Kimya gives you great spice. Great spice. And then maybe Christy as well. I mean, you said one, but I'm like giving you a lot. And then Christy from her username is Read Between the Vines. I love her little series of like, please someone write this. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll try. I love it. She like paints the whole world. So yeah, those are great women that I was had the chance to meet in this journey. And yeah, I love them. Okay. What social media platform do you prefer the most and why? 100% Instagram. I love TikTok for filming, but right now TikTok is a bit getting on my nerves. Um, but I love Instagram. You get a bit of everything. You could chat with people, which I love. I think mm -hmm. that's my favorite part. Um, you get to show love by should be sharing, commenting, talking to people on stories, you could do lives. And then you get to do pictures and videos. So I think Instagram is a great platform in my opinion. But yeah, that's my favorite. I agree. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, so what type of content do you like to create the most, whether that's on like book talk or bookstagram? Mm, I do love my like little dancing, I guess, videos. I really enjoy them. It's like at first I was like, I'll, I'll just play the song and then I'll do whatever I want to do on it. And then apparently it became a thing of me dancing on TikToks. Um, my friend was like, you know, Salma, like people know you for your dancing. I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, that's kind of like what people go on your page for. They're like, they're not even looking for the recommendation. They're just waiting for the good music and the and the dancing. But I do I, love that. I, I love doing them. Like it's it's fun to film. Um, and I love like sharing my love for music. Like besides books, like music is it was a really, really big thing for when I was younger. Um, and I like using songs that I love. They're not like always, you know, known by people. Um, so yeah, the dancing. I do love skits from time to time um but I need to like connect with the book and I feel like because I'm a hijab it's a bit difficult to do skits because I can't be like oh my god yesterday I was so drunk people are gonna be like really <laughs> no it was a skit and I know people won't believe me so yeah I have to like, pick specific books that like I can relate to like I'm a pre-med student or like I don't know just regular like oh I got engaged and he cheated like people could believe that yeah, um, I do love the dancing. They're so fun to do. I love those. We love watching them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, how has being an influencer for the book community changed your life? Oh, it's mm, it's been great, honestly. Like the fact that I'm able to talk to people about books. Sometimes, like you know, you'll meet someone through online, and you'll become like super great friends. Facetime all the time. You create great projects with like it just, it, it opened up so many doors. Like, it, was it something that I, I, I wanted to do with my life? Definitely not. Like I'm in the medical field and I love it. And I definitely will be continuing like working in, in that field. But I don't know. It's like, it, it opened up my creativity because obviously like medicine, it's really black and white. You can't, can't kind of play into it because like your patients won't be very happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like, it's allowed me to be creative. Um, I'm able to write, which was something that I, I used to do when I was younger, but like I never, you know, took it further. Hopefully I could do something with it. Um, and yeah, it's just like it allows you kind of like a, a little community, a little escape from like kind of reality. But like there's actually people there. You're not alone in your well, it's great being alone in your room and escaping a book, <laughs> but like you can escape with others, which like yeah. ne never in my mind would have been something, but now we could do it together. We're like, we can escape and like talk about the books and the book boyfriends and, and how real men are not that always great. Most of the time, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit biased. I don't really like men that much, but <laughs> that's just from experience. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think, I just think it's great. Like everybody's so loving. Like I said, obviously there's always people that hate, but like they're usually not necessarily from the community or they're haters and we don't like haters so we're not going to talk about them but yeah it's just honest it's been great and also getting books is is also great 
but yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah just interacting with like your authors your favorite authors never in a million years would I have thought that I could speak to I read the book and I can speak to you about your book or about yeah. anything else in, in life and you'll like interact and you will talk and like you'll ask how school is and how life is that's insane to me because for me authors were like yeah same very far away and then this whole like book talk when it started like two years ago because of COVID and stuff and the whole bookstagram you can talk and they reshare me every time an author that I read their book reshare me I'm like oh really you saw my video yeah (laughs) I love it it's it's just been great honestly Mm -hmm. wouldn't change it for anything love it love that I'm literally everything about the author Sam like I when I first started doing like just getting bookstagram book talk anything like it's like I never in a million years thought you could actually talk to authors and then like they respond to you and they're like oh my god how do you like it I'm like wait you're talking to me (laughs) wait is this like real life like I think the first TikTok I ever posted Sophie commented within like five minutes of me posting I was like what (laughs) like is this real life it's so crazy and it's like it's just such a fulfilling community. Like, yes, like you said, mm-hmm. they're paid, but I mean, it's when you're on the happy goodness side of it, it's just yeah, amazing. so fulfilling. And you meet so many great people that yeah. like, you share the same things. Like, honestly, yeah, like, I mean, not everybody, but you have real friends and like real friends and not that people that you meet online or not, but like real, you know, from work and stuff like that. And, but you can't necessarily share that like side of you yeah. of like being a romance reader because like always like there's always even though you're like super comfortable talking about romance books there's always like that fear of like someone saying something weird yeah. um, and you just don't want to deal with that um but like we know each other on like a different more personal level like you will never catch me speaking about kinks with my friends from university no <laughs> ever but me and emma that's all of our conversation what would you try with your husband what would you try with your partner what don't you like like and we only read this we've never been in a relationship well and me anyways um but yeah it's like we're comfortable with each other we give we give each other like that that safe space of talking and I feel like that's never something I would have experienced if if I didn't like join this yeah I mean me and Sam literally the other day (laughs) she uh I have a boyfriend. Sam has not been in a relationship and <laughs> Sam's writing right now. So we literally had like a full on discussion where she's like asking me <laughs> questions. Like, no, like, I really, like, okay. It was like, because there's a seed. I don't think this is really like a, like a thing, but there's a seed where they like fuck on top of a formula one car. Okay. And I was like, how is this going to work? Like, <laughs> it the logistics her- of it. <laughs> yeah. Like literally. And I was just like, just, let's continue writing it but yeah because like I read a lot so like I think technically speaking I'm able like I I personally think my spice for now is great from what people that read my scenes but at the same time I'm like is it is it realistic like if someone that's been in a relationship and have tried things would that make sense to them or is it just in my brain in my head it works so yeah that's always that's always a very difficult thing but that's well, funny I, I'm here to help <laughs> I would Potter. never be able to ask my friends that like hey you know I, I know you have a boyfriend like how how does it work they would look at me and they'd be like huh <laughs> but like you ask that to to your friend that you met on this on this community and is also a romance reader or a spicy reader they'll be like oh Girl, let's FaceTime. Okay, let's yeah. let's take it step by step. It for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, and there was another thing where I was like, okay, I don't know about, I don't need children coming up in this. And I know people are going to be like, oh, they're not using like condoms. So I was like, I was telling Jess how effective is birth control. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, do you do this? Do you do this? Are you good? I'm like, I've been on birth control for six years. We're going strong. Um, <laughs> so, you know, yeah yeah I mean sorry Sorry, my little brother was like Thelma your food is in front of the door I'm like thank you I'll get it after (laughs) Um, but yeah but yeah so definitely we're we're very open in this community (laughs) yes okay so um 
Social media can be toxic at times and the romance community has been known to get plenty of hate. Is that something you've had to deal with at all? And if yes, how do you handle it? Yes, because the thing on my head is apparently attractive to haters um, in real life in general and in this community, unfortunately. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm thankful that, um, I mean, thankful is it the right word to use that I experienced a lot of hate in real life and it kind of like made me grow a bit stronger of like not giving a shit yeah. um so I feel like when I came in this platform and like a lot of people are like either commenting on like my religion and like why am I reading this why am I posting this or like just in general people just hating on women and romance readers in general I'm like my best friends are delete and block I will not give you the time of day I will delete your comment and block you. And most of the time, what people say don't really affect me. What I really, really hate is when I'll go on my comments and then I'll see someone attacking somebody else. I'm like, eh, eh. No, 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 no. We'll stop that right there. You can <laughs> insult me. Insult me all you want. I really don't care. But you, I, because I don't know the other person, like how, like obviously mentally speaking, like are they okay with hate? Why are you hating the other person? She didn't even say anything. Like, yeah. she said it was hot. Let her think it was hot. Leave. <laughs> and so I just delete and block people uh I, I don't think about it twice and like if it's like a, a, an opinion mm -hmm. about something and about the book you're like oh you know I didn't really love this about the book fine fine you can have different opinions I don't really care about opinions but if you're commenting on me on who I am as a person or you're attacking somebody else or just women in general being like oh, yeah, I can't think of why are you reading this whatever people say um yeah I'm not gonna give you the platform to do it you can use your platform to do it if you want, but you definitely won't be using mine to do it. So yeah. I, just, I don't give a shit. And again, it really has to do with like me having to grow with this. And, and obviously, like, obviously it hits you sometimes, but I feel like I have so many other things to think about than to give the, the chance to somebody to like bring me down. It does sometimes, obviously, but I just, I'm like, you know what? They don't know me as a person. So fuck them. I mean, obviously, like, I hate that you have to deal with that. And it, it really is fucked up the world we live in that anyone has to deal with anything like that. But your mindset towards it is like everything it should be like, don't even give them the time of day. Fuck them. They're not worth it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We try. We try. You know, it is what it is. You can't change the world. You can only change your your reaction to it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I, I agree on like what you said about how when they start assuming you as a person like you know when I got attacked for reading the off balance well like supporting the off balance series and they were literally talking about like molestion and pedophilia and then started like telling me like you don't know what it's like to be an essay survivor you don't know what it's like and I was like how do you know me excuse me sorry like, oh, it's, it's literally like first of all not only is it victim blaming it away it's also assuming someone's like history like they don't know what I've been through and I had to like come like I didn't have to but I felt the need to defend myself in that moment and be like what like do you know me like those types of things they really like irk me like it's one thing to tell me I shouldn't be reading something okay I'm gonna fucking read it anyway you make me want to read it more <laughs> but it's another thing where it's like questioning who I am in real life Okay, mm -hmm. those are the types of things that really irk me and like Yeah. You're judging me from literally a 15 seconds video. Yeah. Exactly. It, how how and also like I never understood how the first thing you can think of when you see another human being is how to hate them. Like yeah. it, it takes you more effort to hate than to love. Yeah. It takes more effort to love. Literally, you just or not give a shit. You just scroll past or whatever you want to do, exit from the video or something like that. But you really have to think of what to say. What can I say to hurt the person? And then comment it. Like, thank you for giving me the intention because you're thinking about me actively on how to hurt me and what to say. So like, I don't give a shit about what you say, but thank you for giving me the time of day because what are you doing? Like- I yeah some people and I'm just like I don't get it I it never it blows yeah. my mind people do that I'm just like you're assuming people and especially like the thing when you're saying about like 
they throwing out big words and like essay and rape. And I'm like, first of all, you probably a 14 year old kid watching this video. Most of the time, you don't really know what those terms really mean. And especially like when they start throwing those big words, I'm like, do you know the definition of what those words mean before just throwing it out there? Did you read the book? Don't start oh making opinions. Oh my God, literally. Before reading the book. Period. Oh if it's God. not for you, it's not for you. I'm not going to force off balance. I'm not going to force credence on you. I'm not going to force corrupt on you. I'm never going to force anything on you. But you can't make an opinionated decision or something about a book when you haven't even read it. Because yep. if you didn't read the book, she the one who jumps on him. Exactly. Literally, I was talking about that. this the other day. If that isn't consent, I don't know what is. The <laughs> amount of time she says, I want you. I want you. He's like, no, we can't do this. He's like, but stop it. Physically pushing her away. She keeps coming back. What do you want him? He loves her. Make it make he it. Him alone. Like, he loves her. Okay? Like, he loves her. He loves her. <laughs> no, I don't get it. I'm just like, don't make an opinion if you don't read the book. And if you want to make an opinion about a book you haven't read, you could do it somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, on the platform, there's good reads, go, go there, say yeah. the stuff you want. But again, your opinion, I don't like to say opinions are not valid, but that opinion is not valid because you haven't read the book. Yes. How is your opinion valid when it doesn't have any foundation? Exactly. Yep. So into my rent. Sorry, I get really passionate about these things because I'm like, get my blood boiling, my blood pressure high. I'm like, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> So we're on the complete same page. And I mean, like, look, trying to understand like what goes on in people like that's mind and head is like literally just a waste of energy because I never will. Like I, I will never get it. It's never, and it's never going to get us anywhere. You're going to argue, keep arguing, and then it's taking your time. And I don't like to waste my time. No. So goodbye. Bye. <laughs> right, literally. Okay, well, with all of that said, last question to close this out. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about being an influencer for the book community? My favorite thing was definitely meeting people. I love it. Like being able to talk about the books you love um, and like discovering like certain like similar interests and like you become friends based on that. Um, so honestly, just meeting people has been like great because then now I can talk about the books that I read with people. So that makes me very happy. Um, and least favorite thing, well, I will say the hate, even though I don't really care for it, but still, it's not, it's not great. Um, it's not great to like, like feel the hate and like people coming at you. And most of the time, like when people come at you, they're like, oh, she probably doesn't care. So let me come at something she loves. Some people came at my parents. I was like, what? So that was, yeah. Some people came out parents saying they didn't educate a good woman, good religious woman. I'm like, do you see me praying every day? No, you don't. So you don't know me. Like, <laughs> how are you judging my parents? My parents are great people. God bless them. So, so like, <laughs> what? So I would say this, honestly, this is the only thing that like, I, I don't, I don't like is, is being judged because I'm a woman of color and I'm a Muslim. Like, obviously I'm judged by that in the system. And I have to deal with it. But like coming to a community and then also having to live that online wasn't great at first. It was it was an adjustment period. But yeah, I'd say that's the only thing I can think of that's like the my least, my least favorite thing. Well, they're hiding behind their phone screens and you're thriving. Mm -hmm. So screw them all. Exactly. My friends always say that. They're like, they're just haters. They're yeah. just you thriving and they're ha they're like unhappy about it. I'm like, okay, well, that's that's a good way to see it. But I think you're also an example for the different types of people who read romance. Like, it doesn't matter where you come from. Like, you know, like if you're a person of color or your religion, if you if you read these books, that doesn't mean you're less than anyone. And the fact that people are like saying that, I think that means that you're an example for Muslim women everywhere who read romance and smut. So. Yeah, I love getting those comments in my DMs. They're like, oh my God, I thought I was the only Muslim woman reading these books. I'm like, no, you're not. I've been doing this since I was 12. <laughs> on my own in my room. <laughs> but yeah, no, but it's great. Honestly, it's great meeting people, talking to people. It's It's been an amazing journey and hopefully I can continue it. 
Well, perfect. That's all the questions we have for you. So thank you so much for coming on. This was so much fun yeah, talking to you. Yes, it was. And I'm excited to talk about a balance with you guys. Yes. Whenever you read off balance, let us know so we can discuss for sure. That was Salma from Salma's Library. We had so much fun talking to her. She is literally so sweet, so funny, such an amazing person and, and such an inspiration to this community also. And uh, please check out her social media, check out our social media and stay tuned for who we have coming on next week. And that's all we got for you. Okay. Uh, that was so fun. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye guys. <laughs> That was the Bookish Babes podcast. Make sure to check back every Wednesday for more and head over to our Instagram for updates. Thank you for listening. 